Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. This is another video on my simple multiplayer Steam tutorial system where we're using my simple Steam multiplayer template that again is available via uh, PayPal and Patreon with different levels. So, discussed that in my last couple videos. But what we're going to do on this video is we're going to create a simple character selection menu. And we're going to do it in a simple way so that once you're already in the game, you can swap it around. And I'm going to make this on the fly. So there's nothing already pre-planned on this other than the idea of what I want to create. So we're in the actual lobby map right now so that we can just quickly check and see what we're doing. See if we're screwing up. First thing we need to create is the widget. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to the widgets folder of the UI folder. And I'm going to go ahead and make a... Mm, Oh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and open up our escape menu widget. Now, inside here you've got the main menu button, you've got an empty space, and you've got the resume button. Now, let's go ahead and expand that. I've got this as a vertical box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the vertical box and I'm going to expand it down a little bit. The original um, setting for it the box size is 300 by 130 and well the 130 is the Y so let's actually make that 300 give us room to work with now I like having this little gap in between it's a little nice touch so I'm gonna and that's actually image 0 to make it easier to read I'm gonna left click on it a second time and I'm gonna call this gap image so I know what it is. Now, with it highlighted, I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to select Copy. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. This is just so you get an idea of what I'm using and what I'm doing. And now, in this vertical box, I'm going to click here, I'm going to right-click, and then I'm going to select Paste. And you can control C and control v And now it's added in another little gap image. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab the main menu button. I'm going to right-click on the main menu button, I'm going to go ahead and copy that one, click back on my vertical box, and right click and paste. Now, what we've just done is we've just created a clone of the main menu button. So we're going to change this so we know what it's going to be called the char select button, you know, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to go ahead and open it up and where it says main menu left click on that come right over here we're gonna highlight and change this text you wanna make sure it's blue and we're gonna call this character select there we go now we can see that this box is now just a little bit too big so let's bring it back up close that gap just a hair Let's see if we can get away with changing it to 200. Not 2002. Mm. I think it looks okay for now. So we want to get this back in the center again. So instead of negative 65, let's go ahead and do negative 100. And that'll move it up to where it's dead center in the middle of your screen. And I. I think it's actually a little bit too small. So let's go ahead and make it 210. Let's go ahead and call it 206. You, you'll want to kind of fidget around with it and just kind of see what you can do to get it as close as you possibly can. 204, that's good. So now we can just come over here to the position Y, change this to negative 102, which is half of that. So now it's back to being dead center in the middle of the screen again. Now, with that button selected, we can scroll down over here, and we want to click on the big green box here for on clicked. And now you can see what we did to get those to work. Um, we're going to go ahead and we'll change the order of those buttons in just a second, also. But on clicked, we want to come back to this because we don't have anything for it to do just yet but we wanted to create a way of getting to it 
go back to your designer you can minimize these buttons now you can grab left click on here we want this to be where the resume game button is so I'm gonna move this to right here underneath the first gap image then I'm gonna left click on the resume button and I'm gonna drag it down to where it's underneath the other one so we're just swapping around so that we got the character select button in the middle and a resume game at the bottom nice and clean and simple go ahead and hit compile and save and we'll go back to our graph and let's go ahead and create the widget that we want it to actually do or we can make it work in this one to make it a little bit different we can have it to where it shows up right over here on the right hand side of the screen and we don't have to worry about creating a second widget or anything else so let's go ahead and do that kinda keep it a little bit easy now there's so many different ways you can do styling to make these these um, windows look better and and change things around but let's just keep it simple for right now we can upgrade it later on so from our character select we want it to just come off to the right a little bit and show up right here red white and blue since we've already created red man and blue man so let's go ahead and create a vertical box and that's going to be in panel scroll down to where you got a vertical box left click drag it into the screen and since we know this is 300 wide we're gonna go ahead and anchor this to the center of the screen and we're gonna go ahead and we're not gonna worry about the position just yet we're gonna do the size is 300 by uh, I think we said it was 204 so it's gonna be exactly the same size as this one now we can just come over here and we want the position to be negative 102 to match exact height as that one and we know that this one right here this vertical box was set at negative 150 so that it splits that 300 so we could actually be smart and use math I don't want my brain to start hurting but if we looked at 150 50, this could be right on top of it so we can look at 160 but I think I'm gonna go with 180 so it's gonna stand off just a little bit now we could just easily just copy this and put it on over there which is probably not a, a bad way to go you're gonna have to change everything anyway but if you want to do that you can select here and then shift click you've selected everything that's inside that box you can right click copy and then left click on this new vertical box right click and paste quick little shortcut you have just created all these new stuff in that box now you just need to open it up go to the first button and we're gonna call this white man button change the text and we want to say white man alright so that was good to go and we'll come down here to button 2 we're going to rename this one red man button change the text over and we're gonna call it red man easy enough right and then last but not least blue man button and change the text for it and we're gonna call it blue man yep, let's put a space in there let's be party alright so now we don't want this window to always show up so if we wanted to actually do it a different way it would have been easier but I just want to show how you can actually make it to where it only shows up whenever you hit the character select button it'll then pop up right over here and then whenever you click on resume game the whole window will go away and all of it will go away 
So now while we're thinking about it, we have the vertical box. We're going to click on it. Since they're both called the same thing, we're going to left click on this one. We're going to change this one to menu box and make sure it's a variable. It doesn't necessarily need to be on this one, but now we're going to click on the other one and char character select box. Make sure it's a variable. Now, we'll have a way of triggering what we can do with this one, but while we have this one selected, we need to come right over here to behavior and visibility and set it to hidden. Now, the other way we can do it is collapsed, but hidden will work just as well for what we're doing right now. So now we can go to our graph. So now when we hit the character select button, what we want to do is we know that the character select box, which is right here, and I'm going to left click and drag that in here. And you can either left click and drag it in and then select either get or set, or you can hold down the control key, left click, drag it in, and you'll automatically get a, a box for that. Now, what we want to do is something a little bit different. Let's try it with the flip-flop option. So, with a flip-flop box, then we want to set visibility. We drag off from A, set visibility, and just going to drag it off to over here, and I'm going to drag this to right here, and then I'm going to control C and control V so I can create a second one. Come off from B on that one, and we're going to drag off from character selection box to the target on both of them from the same node here. Now when we click it the first time, it's going to make it visible. We click it a second time, we're going to tell it to be hidden. So this in theory should get it to where it works. We know our escape menu already works. Now, unfortunately, if we hit the escape key while we're in a regular view, it's just going to exit the project. Um, so we're going to have to run this in standalone and let it go ahead and load. So we know that the um, the escape menu already is showing in our visibility, so we don't have to worry about changing anything with that. But we're just going to let this load. We're going to go into single player. Yeah, it does take a little bit longer to do this. But since we're already in the map, we didn't have to go through the main menu to get here. So I hit escape. Oh, there's character select. There we go. It pops it up here. I hit it again, and it makes it go away. And then I can resume game and keep on doing my thing. So, we know that it works. Now we just need to add a little bit of functionality to it. And this is where it's going to be interesting. There's a couple different ways you can actually go about doing this. Now, I'd say probably the easiest way is once we know that it's visible. Okay, we need to make some changes. So now what we need to do is come back to our designer graph, select the white man button. Even though it's already the default player, we still need to have an option. If I click on red man and it changes it, we're, we should be able to see it because of the way this menu is, is open. What if I want to change it back? So we have to have a way of changing it back. If I'm already the blue man, I want to go back to white. So. With white man selected, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select unclicked. It's going to create that. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the, what do we have? Red man, then blue man. But while I'm here, I'm going to grab the red man button, select unclicked. Then I'm going to select the blue man button and again, do that. So we have all three of them right here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tell the player underscore base, which is what our character is, what we're going to change our character into. And now cast to player underscore base. And we're going to need to get 
for right now, we're just going to do this and set up for um, for single player. So we need to get player character. So we have a player character reference. And we'll work on getting this replicated later to where it'll affect only who decides that they're going to change it. So as the player base, you now this is where it's going to be interesting. We have to find exactly what we need to change here. Um, set skeletal mesh. Now you've got the uh, the target mesh. Set skeletal mesh, and we're going to link that off of here. Now, new mesh select here, and we know that we're on the white man button, so we're just going to select SK underscore mannequin. Now, that's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and select all of this. Control C, Control V, and Control V. I'm going to connect that up, neaten it up, change this one to red man. We're going to go ahead and connect this one, get it nice and pretty. And then we want to change that one to blue man. Hit compile, hit save. Go back in here and let's try it one more time and see what happens. Let's see if it actually works. Let's see if I actually created something on the first try that actually works. It's been known to happen. What? Stop laughing. <laughs> All right, so let's see if what we actually created actually works here. So we're running around. We're the white guy. We're going to hit the escape key. Hit character select. Hit red man. Hit blue man. Hit white man. Hit red man. Resume game. Yay! It worked on the first try. So now we know how we can actually change it. This will be the quick way to, to manually change it now. So we can change it how we look on the fly. But later on, what we're going to do is once we start doing a red versus blue environment, then we will actually whenever a character joins we can select it in the menu okay this is what I'm gonna be versus you know whatever I'm gonna join the red team or the blue team and it'll automatically select the color of your character for you or later down the line since it's changing your skeletal mesh you can actually change it to a completely different model or a different character so yeah alright well hopefully you found this at least a little bit of, um, helpful because now you have the ability to on the fly change your character on a, a multiplayer game and be able to change from red white and blue you can do this with as many colors as you want with as many buttons for each color as you want you can actually later down the line if you want to do a custom palette you can come up with a way of doing that where you can randomly generate a color or you pick one of your own own tone or let the, uh, the the player pick their own. There's so many different possibilities you can use with this same basic setup. So hopefully you found this video helpful and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.